Have you just picked up your first car and you're getting ready to modify it? Or maybe you got a mad hand-me-down from your great aunt. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you the first seven mods that you should do to your car. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Now, a little while ago, I was telling someone about my modified car and they said, you can't modify your car, that will wreck it. Now, it turns out that wreck it, W-R-E-C-K-I-T, is the perfect acronym of exactly what you should do to your car when you first get it. So today, Martin, we're working on this. This is a 2019 Subaru WRX STI Spec R, powered by a 2.5 litre, four cylinder turbocharged engine and all wheel drive. But regardless of what car you have, our top seven mods are guaranteed to work no matter what. So let's get into it. So there's the car. We're gonna start on our wrecking journey and the first letter is W, so let's start with wheels. One of the most satisfying mods you can do to any car is changing the wheels. There's lots of reasons you might do it. It might just be for aesthetics, it might be for racing and lightness, or it might be to change the specs, or you can do all of those things in one hit. So on the car, we are installing some WEDS SA72Rs from Japan. We got these through Import Monster. Not only are these going to give us a more aggressive offset, but they're gonna let us fit wider tires as well. I can't actually remember what these look like since I ordered them, but we're about to see them for the first time. This here is the wheels that are going on our STI. Wheels can make or break the look of your car and there are literally hundreds of different styles and options. Do some research online and find out what specs will work best for your model of car and the look you're after. So these are the wheels that are going on our STI and the next letter is R for rubber. We've done a bit of testing and we have found that tyres are the absolute best bang for buck mod you can do if you love driving your car. Now, if you're gonna be spending heaps of time on the track, you can go for something like a Michelin Cup 2, which is the OE tyre on a Porsche 911 GT3, or one step down from that, you can go to a Pilot Sport 4S, or if you've got a daily car, you want something quiet, comfortable, safe, that's also gonna give you all the performance you need on the street, you can go for something like this, what we're putting on, which is a Michelin Pilot Sport 4. The Pilot Sport line of tyres are co-designed with manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes, Audi and Porsche, with a tread pattern design that comes from their experience in motorsport. Short version, get yourself a good set of wheels and tyres before you do anything else. First step is jack up your car. We're going to use some jack stands and then remove the factory wheels and tyres. In terms of tools to help you on your quest of wrecking your car, the most useful are a good jack and jack stands, a set of hand tools, and at a minimum an impact driver helps make removing stubborn wheel and suspension bolts super easy. While our tyres are getting fit to our wheels, we can move on to the E of wreck it, which is exhaust. Next up, exhaust, which is an awesome, easy way to make the car sound mad and also potentially unlock some performance. Now, there are so many different kinds of exhausts available, different volumes, different styles, but depending on the kind of car you've got, there are really simple bolt-on systems, and today we're keeping it all about the simple with a catback system. Now, there are loads of different options for volume when it comes to exhaust for your car. Because this is a daily, I want something that's fairly quiet but also unleashes some of that awesome boxer rumble. So I am installing an NVIDIA Q300. Now the great thing about this is it is like a modular system. So later on, if you want to kind of upgrade turbo or get more power or go further on with your modification journey, then you can keep all of this system and just add the dump pipe section on. Now, while I'm unboxing this and getting this ready, we can also move on to the C of wreck it, which coils. is... Coils, springs, coil springs, coil overs if you want to go crazy. These, will give us a slight 15 mil drop on our MAD STI and also just stiffen up the handling a little bit. It's a really simple, easy thing you can do. Improves your handling, but also drops the car for MAD aesthetics. So while the exhaust is happening, I'm gonna get started on these. We're using a set of white line springs that lower the center of gravity of the car and have a progressive coil design. These are designed to work well with the factory shock absorbers. While Marty's working on the springs, I'm going to install the exhaust system. On one end of the extreme, some people just change the tips. They say the tip is enough. Other people then would change the mufflers. From there on in, you can get a 
axle back exhaust, or in this case a diff back, which would be replacing the exhaust from here onwards. If you replace this center pipe as well, all the way up to here, that's what we call a catback system. There's a few benefits to that. It's really easy, it's quick, uh, it is cheaper than getting a full system, and if you're in places like California and other countries where emissions are really important, it retains the factory catalytic converter, which means that Captain DCAT doesn't kick you in the balls. If you do replace from that section back there, it is more work to install, it's a bit more complex, it might need a custom tune, you will unlock some more power, but in terms of our wreck it simplicity program, today we are doing catback, which is from here to there. To do this job, I'm gonna need a 12 mil and a 14 mil spanner. WD-40 also makes it easier too because you can spray the bolts before you take them off, let that soak in, and you can also use WD-40 to lube up the rubber exhaust hangers. Also, a ratchet wrench like this Ryobi one that ratchets from the side is really good when you've got limited space. We don't have a hoist here. We've got very limited space underneath here, so this here makes the job way easier. In terms of difficulty, changing springs can be a little bit challenging because you do have to get them off the shock, but it's really just a matter of pulling it all apart, taking it apart, safely getting the spring off and putting your new spring back on. There's a few little tips that help, like if you've got alignment on the bolts, like you do in this top bolt here, then you just want to mark where the alignment is, which saves you having to get a wheel alignment afterwards. It's always a good idea to do that, but it means to drive to the shop, you're not going to be going down the road like this. Uh, front and back on this car is basically the same process. The shock and the spring are one unit, so you unbolt it, take it out, take the spring out, put the new springs back in and whack it all back together. All right, so this center piece is coming off, something like that. Now I'll take the mufflers off and then the new one can go on. So we've got our new exhaust laid out next to the factory one so we can have a look at some of the differences. You can see that the actual muffler unit there is a little bit smaller than this and we would expect that because most people want to do this change so they get a little bit more volume without it being too crazy. Of course some people just straight pipe these, no resonation, no mufflers at all. Uh, that'll just get you defected and probably arrested here in Australia. Uh, coming down to this piece of the pipe here, we can see that the factory one is 40 millimetres, which is, what is that in inches, Martin? 40 millimetres? 1.5, 1.6. 1.5 or 6, that. and we're going from uh, that 40 millimetres now to 56, 57 millimetres, so a big increase there, which is like two and a half or two and a quarter or something like that. Stainless steel the whole way along. There's a smaller resonator again, we would expect that uh, for some more volume. And other than that, it should just bolt straight on, so let's get to it. How are you going, Martin? Good, man. Get this shock done. While Marty's swapping out our factory springs for the lowered white line springs, I'm going to be installing the exhaust system. Hanging the new exhaust is made much easier by spraying the rubber exhaust hangers with some WD-40 and using an axle stand to hold up the pipe while you do everything up. I'll leave all of the nuts and bolts a bit loose until the whole system is on and once it's in place, I can tighten everything up. Hello! 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 Is anybody there? Is anybody there? The exhaust is on, let's have a listen. The 
exhaust is on and sounds way better and a really good volume for a daily drive. Now we're just finishing off the springs and we are done for the E and C of Wreck-It. So we've covered the W for wheels, the R for rubber and E for exhaust. And we've done our C for coil springs. So next up is K. Body kits are a huge part of modifying your car, particularly in parts of the world where there are lots of rules about what you can and can't do with your engine and with your emissions. Now, body kits can range from crazy big wide body JDM things through to really simple, subtle things that you can do with your car. For the SCI, I've ordered this lip kit online, which consists of a front lip, or what some people I think call a splitter. It's got a little rear diffuser thing. It's got some side skirts and then these mad JDM inspired weather shields or what they call a window visor. So let's install them. Usually lip kits are mounted to existing factory mounting holes on the bumper or you may need to drill in some new holes and then glue and bolt the pieces into place. Most decent kits will include instructions and they really are quick and easy to install. You can even make your own lip kit out of plastic garden edging for around 20 bucks which we've done a whole episode on. Lip kits not only give your car a more aggressive and unique look, they also trick the eye into making your car look lower than it really is, as there's less gap between the lowest point of the car and the ground. The front lip is on and it's looking awesome. Meanwhile, Marty is now moving on to the side skirts and I'm moving on to the eye, which is for intake. My car goes psh, psh. Putting a performance intake or filter on your car is one of the most common performance modifications people do, whether your car is naturally aspirated or turbocharged. Now, there are all sorts of claims about how much power can be unlocked, but the truth is they just sound freaking awesome, particularly when you've got a turbocharged car. So I'm going to be installing, uh, which Cobb sent me, a performance, here it is, a performance intake that should unleash the full mad induction sound of our turbocharged STI. Depending on your model of car, you may have a restrictive intake which may ultimately affect your performance. And there's numerous reasons why the original manufacturer may have engineered them this way, including trying to keep the intake sound down. But usually with modified cars, we want the opposite, which is where something like this comes in. Now you've got loads of options when it comes to intakes from performance drop-in filters, short ram intakes, cold air intakes, exposed pod filters, or even just Swiss cheesing your factory airbox. Depending on your car though, it's possible that you'll need a tune to unlock any performance benefit, and this can be true with other performance components as well, such as exhaust systems, which may not perform any better than your factory system until the ECU has been adjusted. Meanwhile, Marty is installing our JDM inspired weather shields, which I think look excellent. And now the new carbon intake and performance filter can go in. I tighten up the hose clamps, re-plug in the sensor and it's done. It bolted on absolutely perfectly, real quality, so a massive thank you for sending it over and I cannot wait to hear the epic induction sound of this EJ25. And a similar experience with the lip kit as well. It just bolted on really nice, good hardware. It's really satisfying when you get past it actually fit the car. And even these weather shields, they, um, they fit up really, really nicely and these are awesome when it's raining because you can just crack the window and still get some fresh air. Martin, let's have a look. I really like those weather shields because in Japan they're just everywhere. Yeah. It's kind of a thing that people do, but um, that looks great, man. That looks awesome. So the last thing for our record is T, and you'll find out what that is shortly, and then our wheels and tyres will be back. So the car will be finished. Let's get to T, which is for... Tune. By now, we have got to the end of our Wreck-It process, which is T for tune. Now, a tune is the way of unlocking the full potential of your car's performance and unlocking any performance benefits of any modifications that you've added to your car. In our case, we've got our cutback exhaust and our intake. Now, by far the most versatile and advanced way to do this is to wire in a full standalone ECU, which is what we've done in a lot of our cars using Haltex. They also make plugins that you can just plug into a car, tune up, load a, load a base map and go for it. That gives you the most versatility, particularly if you're gonna go hard with modifications or you're doing a whole bunch of custom stuff. You can do nitrous staging, you can do all sorts of solenoids and sensors going above and beyond what you can do from the factory. And on the other extreme, you can download a flash file off the internet with open source software, cross your fingers and flash it in. It does work, it works well for a lot of people, but there's an element 
element of nerdery that you also need to make that happen. And probably an element of risk as well, depending on where you're getting your data and your software from. There is a middle road as well, which is using a proprietary system, which is usually a kind of a handheld controller that has been developed and programmed by a company that then you plug into your car and then you can reprogram your ECU that way. And that is by far the easiest way to do things, particularly if you're in a lockdown situation or you live in a really remote area, it is the most accessible. So for this series, that is what we are doing with our SDI. For our project today, we're using a Cov access port that I got online. This here is a little handheld controller that connects to the car via OBD2. It's got some pre-loaded maps on there that have been programmed, and there's a map there that is specifically designed for this car with that particular intake. So we're gonna plug it in and load it on. This is super quick and easy, literally just a matter of minutes to reflash a performance tune to the car. But keep in mind that depending on the tune you use, your ECU may now be locked to that particular tuning company, so do your research. There also may be warranty and servicing issues, which personally I don't care about, but it is worth mentioning. The ECU is now reflashed. Meanwhile, our tyres have been fit and balanced, so now they're ready to go on as well. So our wheels and tyres have arrived and they look freaking awesome. So these are our WEDS wheels with our Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. These are 255-35-18s. So they're fatter, wider, and these wheels are made with the correct offset to make the STI look as fat as it should while still clearing the brakes. It's very exciting. We're putting them on, then we're gonna drop the car down, and then we're done. Well, we've actually got a couple of bonus mods we'll run you through as well. Before we get to our bonus modification, it's time to get the wheels and tyres back on the STI. Wind the nuts in, and then it's a good idea to check your manual for torque specs, and using a torque wrench, tighten them to the recommended settings. Recheck them once you've done some driving. Now is also the time to go and get a wheel alignment done, particularly if it hasn't been done in a while and because we've changed the suspension. Depending on your setup, you can have the shop dial in the car depending on whether you want it set up for street or the track or a combination of both, which will determine how much grip you've got versus how quickly your tyres will wear. And now we have officially wrecked it, so it's time to lower it down and have a look. OK, people, it is coming down. We will get to see what it looks like for the first time. Is our jack too low? <laughs> Jack's stuck in there forever now. Oh, 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 yes. Is the car too low, I mean. All right. Love it. There it is. Looks great. It's going to settle a little bit once we uh, go for a drive, which is what I think we should do right now, Martin. Awesome. I think we should get in, go for a spin, Keen. see what it sounds like. Looks fat, man. Mildly fat. All right, Martin. See how she goes, how it sounds. Oh, we've got some mad intake now. Heaps more intake. The exhaust sounds pretty sweet too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's got a bit more go. Feels good. Yeah. It doesn't feel crazy, but just feels like a good increase. And I think it's around like a 10 or 15% increase in power, which considering you can do it all in a day, it's pretty good. And we can still talk in here. Yes. It's yeah. not like silly loud, but it just has a nice note to it. That's awesome. Wrecked it, man. We did, Martin. <laughs> Probably too slow, isn't it? No. It's got plenty of power. That... Nice. ...is how you wreck your car, everybody. Totally wrecked it, mate. But good wrecked it. Not bad wrecked it. Sounds awesome. Goes awesome. The intake sound is bellissimo. So there it is. That is the wreck it process of modifying your car. If you're just starting out, you're just beginning, you got wheels, rubber, exhaust, coilovers or springs, your body kit, your intake and your tune. But I understand, Martin, you've got some bonus mods got for some us. bonus mods, but before we get into that, it's worth saying there are lots and lots of different ways you can modify your car. You can go full custom back to the drawing board, hand tools only, no electricity, do it by candlelight. You can use the most crazy high-tech CNC mill stuff, make it all yourself, design it all yourself, 3D print everything. You can customize it. You can post that stuff on Instagram, or you can also buy bolt-on stuff that just works. You stick it in your car, you smash it on it, have it a good, have a good time. But it doesn't matter which way you do it, it's all about modifying your car and enjoying the experience of doing it and the experience of actually getting in your car and driving it all the time. Every time you turn the key, get in it, have that satisfaction of, you know, I did some stuff. Yeah. How you did it, 
depending on your skill levels, up to you. Don't get turned off by people saying, oh no, you can't use that bolt on, or you can't use this, or you should have welded it that way, you should have made it yourself. If you can make it yourself and you can do it, do it. If you can't, buy it, bolt it on and get it done. And there is something really special about the modified car community. Once you start getting into driving, you start getting into changing your car around, there are millions of people from all around the world that are into it as well that you can chat with, you can ask questions, you can share ideas, you can watch videos. So I definitely recommend whatever car you've got, most of these mods are going to transfer no matter what kind of car you've got, but if you've got something specific or niche or kind of wacky that's out there, you will definitely be able to find people online that also share the same kind of uh, ideas as you and will be willing to help. Martin, got a couple of bonus mods for you. These are just some little extra sprinkles that you can sprinkle on if you feel the desire and we thought we'd show them to you. First on my list of bonus mods that you can consider doing, potentially this mod can replace C in Rexit for coil springs. So if you want, you can retain your factory ride height, but still improve your suspension and your handling by upgrading your sway bars. Now, our STI already comes from the factory with stabilizer bars, sway bars they're often called, and a lot of the time you can upgrade them to change the char characteristics of your car and how it drives without having to adjust anything else. So that means that you can run your existing shocks, your existing springs, and just bolt on a set of sway bars. So it could be used interchangeably. What you don't get with sway bars is a drop in ride height that you do get with the springs, but not everybody wants that, and there's argument about what works better. Usually a combination of both is, is the way you end up. Um, so potentially you can also add a sway bar. This is a white line sway bar made specifically for this particular car. It's thicker and it's stiffer, and the white line ones are also adjustable. So they use what they call a blade design on the end, and you can choose which bolt hole you use, and that essentially changes the length of the sway bar and then the stiffness of the sway bar so you can fine tune your handling. So when you get to the point that you want to really fine tune the way the car drives, sway bars is definitely the next modification. Also you can upgrade the links that connect the, um, the sway bar to the actual control arms of the car. Usually about four bolts to stick these things on. So coil springs by themselves, sway bars by themselves or potentially a combination of both. Next on our list of bonus modifications of our Reckitt series is a blow off valve. Now everybody with a turbocharged car and even those that don't have a turbocharged car absolutely love the sound of a turbocharger noise of doing its thing and personally I'm a massive fan of venting to atmosphere blow off valve sounds probably because when I was a kid I had a 180SX and I drove around thinking I was a boss going psh, psh, at everyone because my car goes psh, psh. but what about a car with an airflow meter well that is where a product like the GFB response comes in this here has a bias adjustment so that you can either vent completely to atmosphere by twisting this around like this and you'll see inside I can either go from no trumpet or I can twist all the other way and have that open and you can do a continually variable adjustment depending on what works for your car. That there is a really simple bolt-on modification. We've done a whole video which I'll put down in the description on how to install these on these engines and that means just with a flick of the wrist you can put that on, you can have straight out blast and psh, psh, or you can be recirculating it and there are some benefits as well particularly under high boost applications and also uh, keeping your boost on strong between gear changes which is what this valve does so that is number two on our bonus list of modifications on our record series and now our last and bonus mod You've modified your mad ride and now you've officially wrecked it as a bonus mod you can also consider putting in a dash cam now one way to get a bunch of dash cams is to go buy a tester or something that has 12 of them is always recording or if you've got one of these things you can put your own in these are really simple you just stick them to the inside of the windscreen facing out stick an sd card in it power it up you can either run it to a cigarette lighter if you want super simple or you can hardwire in down through your trim and back under the dash to give it 12 volts that's all you got to do when the car's on it records and you can choose based on gps location you can choose all sorts of file types and these also connect to your phone so you can review the footage a very very easy Mod, I guess, entertainment mod, would you call it? I don't know. Electronic mod that goes in the car and keeps your ride safe. And more and more these days, dash cams are being used not only by um, people investigating when things happen out in the street, asking for dash cam footage, but also used in insurance as well. So it's a really handy thing to have in your car. There it is. Is that all of our bonus modifications, Martin? That's our bonus mods. This there it is. Good. This thing's awesome. 
ready to go and drive around. Amazing. Everybody, that is our wreck -It series. We hope you enjoyed it. No matter what kind of nugget you've got, we hope you can have some fun with it. Of course, if you want to support the show, you can get this t-shirt that I was wearing, uh, which is our Mighty Car Mods Mad Adventure shirt. You can get that from MightyCarMods.com or you can get Martin's in the bin shirt. Martin, what have you got there? Just it's arrived, literally yesterday. Just arrived, chopped. Umbrellas. I just, oh, I just so think good. that's so cool. That's it doesn't amazing. rain much in Australia, but the, for the six days a year when it does, this is what I'm going to be rocking. Amazing. It is a mad Rexy. It's sick. I like it, it. It is good. Are you going to go do some launches now and not break it? Well, that's what you do with these, isn't it? Yeah. Or something, in a safe and controlled manner. Thank you very much for watching this series. We hope you liked it, and we're going to be back at you next time with more shenanigans. And of course, we have hundreds and hundreds of videos showing you how you can modify your car, plus adventures that we've done in countries all over the world. You can find all of them on our channel. I'm not going to tell you to subscribe, because if you like it, you'll hit the button, and if you don't, you won't. And that's all cool anyway. Thank you very much. Martin, let's go get some WRX food. What's that? I don't know. What do, what do Subaru owners eat other than vape? <laughs> they just live in on the vape. No, nah, man. What do they eat? Well, they'd probably go and go to some sort they get, of... What are those meat plates called, where food. they cut up all the meat? Oh, a meat box? One of them. A meat flap. What are they called? It's, it's like a kebab. Oh, a snack pack. A snack oh, pack. Dude, get a snack pack. Can we actually get a snack pack? Yeah, today? we have to order it, but yeah, we can get one. Where, where do you get them from? Kebab shop. Can we actually get one from yeah. out here, though, for lunch? Yep. I've never had one. Oh, they're so good. Holy shit. Have you had life. them before? Yeah, man. Change your life. Drown it in barbecue sauce and chilli sauce. Oh, dude. I'm ready now.